Hello, my name is Ran, and this is the Flow Artist Podcast. Every episode, we interview inspiring movers, thinkers, and teachers about how they find their flow and much, much more. If you love yoga, movement, meditation, and finding flow in your daily life, then this is the podcast for you. I hope you're having a great day today. I think we've reached the peak of winter in Melbourne here, at least in regards to how cold it is. Just looking outside the window, it's a bit of a rainy day, but that's all right because I've got plenty to do and to talk about with you today. This episode is a recorded conversation between myself, my lovely wife and co-host Joe Stewart, Jamie Malu Thomas and Sarah Jones. Jamie and Sarah are the creators of Wayapawadik, a new modality that integrates movement, breath, meditation, Australian indigenous wisdom, and a connection to the elements of nature and the land. I think the work that Jamie and Sarah are doing is really important. And as you'll hear in this episode, they're spreading way up a wedding into schools, youth groups, men's groups, and even into prisons. So I think they're doing some really wonderful, important work. Now, just before we get into the conversation, I just wanted to ask for you to please rate, review, or subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Podcasts, or wherever you download your podcast from. It really helps other people find us so we can spread the word far and wide. Anyhow, this is enough from me. Let's get on to the conversation. I um, personally grew up in Far East Gippsland. That's my traditional homelands. Um, I'm Gunai and my clan and uh, the Kratungalung people, but I also had connections to the western part of Victoria on my Aboriginal side through my grandmother. People don't speak language of the Māori people, or sometimes called the Kunishmara. And I am Welsh Canadian Australian. My parents are Welsh heritage and they moved to Canada, had us as a family, and then we all moved over to Australia when I was about 14. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> And so, would you like to tell us a bit about how your childhood experiences shaped the development of Waipa work and brought you to where you are today? When I finally got the chance to talk to Sarah about building a foundation and building a structure to do that, I told her my story of growing up on country and I grew up in and around little places called Club Terrace. It's nothing like Club Med. Um, <laughs> and Ben River and so my traditional homelands still very bushy and lots of rainforests and beautiful beaches and you know not many people there so I was fully immersed in in nature but also our traditional stories for that area being told those stories so I had I was lucky growing up with that and you know my, my parents we caught a lot of our own food lived off the land you know like fishing we used to fish a lot and catch rabbits and my mum was a, was an amazing gardener always fresh vegetables pretty much all year round so we used to harvest the chicken every couple of weeks you know eat fresh organic chicken and stuff like that so we had a fairly had a fairly good upbringing being out on country and I guess as we got as I got older I sort of moved away from that a little bit because with a lot of societal issues around identity and you have to have this to be this and you got to keep up with the Joneses and you know that whole philosophy of having a, a house with a picket fence with a car and then you know come the 80s and the 90s where I was like have the Armani suits and the, the perfumes and the shoes and the you know what sort of stuff I sort of got sucked into that sort of lifestyle a little bit where I wasn't being aware of my consumerism which goes against our my aboriginal concepts you know aboriginal people and aboriginal culture where they they were the consummate consumer awareness people because they they didn't take what they didn't need and they looked after the environment so yeah i think that how it got to where we are was looking at my growing up and then looking at my traditional culture knowledge you know way up was a way of framing that all up and presenting it and being more aware about our own I remember um, just uh, when I was looking at your website and doing some research, you had a little um, story about how when you're working as a youth worker, you had to like pick up some kids and you were taking them to, was it for a traditional dance workshop or something? Do you want to tell us a little bit about that experience? I I think for me, when we were, you know, because of the concept of, of invasion and dispossession and attempted assimilation, the reclamation of our traditional cultural languages and stories and dances was a, it's been a big part of my life since coming back to my grandmother's country 26 years ago. And I used to teach the kids traditional dance and putting it all back together and putting all that knowledge back together was a very slow process.